Hey, Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. You might remember a video I did a few weeks ago. I mentioned a slider job that slid in ahead on priority on what I was doing. Well, that's what this, this week's video is about. It's a little stainless steel part. We had to make two of them as soon as possible. It was a hot job, and it's a little bracket. It looks just like this. So we're going to make two of them, and I'm going to use some, uh, some of the tooling and the precision table to whip out two really quick, get them fit up. Machinist cut the angles, got all the solid bar stock ready, started off with this flange plate. I want to make a center line on it. And yes, I'm going to use the calipers here to scribe a line. I know this is kind of like sacrilege to a machinist, but these are some really cheap-ass $10 calipers that are bought just for this purpose. So uh, don't worry, I don't use them for measuring anything critical, and they're not calibrated, but for getting a, a good... Uh, Scribe line, it's just big time saver just to have that cheap set. So I got a center line on there. That's kind of like my starting point. And then I'm going to line it up with the edge of the table. And I'm going to use this 90 degree block that comes with the, the tooling package that I got with this uh, uh, Precision Stronghand Build Pro table. And just by using that 90 degree block, I put the old part up, lined it up with the flanges lined up with the edge of the table. And I can get an idea how the, how the new ones are going to go together. Actually, the old ones weren't all that square. And so uh, I don't want to make them too different, though, because uh, this thing is going in a plant, and I've never been there. Wasn't able to visit the plant and see what might be in the way or anything. So I've got to make it really close to the original, because the original one worked, whether it was straight or crooked or whatever. So I just marked out an old line that I was using a different piece of tooling on, so I don't mistakenly use that. I'm going to get a quick Sharpie mark there just to uh, know whereabouts to position the flat flange plate. It's about a 3 8 thick stainless steel plate. And you see how the, the, the clamps work. Any hole accepts one of these one-hand clamps. And I can get that positioned, and I can get, using my scribe lines, I know about where that's going to go, roughly. And then I'll position everything up here. And a pony clamps are something you can hardly have too many of. These spring clamps like this, they're just quick. And uh, they don't hold with much force, but sometimes you just want to hold something temporarily. And uh, you know, I've probably got 10 of those things at least laying around, and, and they'll probably need a few more. So I'm going to pop a few quick tacks, just fusion tacks with no filler metal in case i got to break them loose. And then I bump things around and get things lined up, make sure everything was plumb, straight, square, at 90 degrees, and my distances are right. And uh, more like a little puzzle going together. It almost put itself together because the machine has cut precise angles on the, on the uh, bar stock. So I just had to make sure to get the upright piece straight and square to the bottom flange. So I'm getting plenty of tacks, just little fusion tacks. Then I'll come back and add a little filler here and there before I weld it out. But in, a lot, in about five minutes, uh, got them all tacked up, square, true, just about ready to weld out. So what I'm, good, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you uh, two different techniques. I'm always going to be weaving just a little bit just to make that bead flatten out. because that was a stipulation from the customers that the, the, the welds are nice and smooth or they need to be blended nice and smooth. So we want to make them, you know, you might have seen the old welds. They weren't very smooth. So here I'm just dipping the wire in and out, not coming out of that puddle very far so I can keep the tip of the rod shielded with argon. That's important for welding stainless steel. I'm using ER308L, 1 16th diameter stainless, and that's what that weld looks like. Here's another one coming up. All right, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to leave the wire in the puddle. Same technique otherwise. For stainless steel, a lot of times this is a good technique for thick stuff like this where you can use enough amperage, you can motor on. You know, sometimes the objective is to discolor only a little bit, to not warp much, and to move on out. And so leaving the wire in the puddle uh, sometimes helps in doing that. And, you don't ever risk contaminating the tip of that wire if you leave it in the puddle. 
So you get a little bit different look and you can see a little bit better color on that one because I, mo I moved on a little bit quicker. And for this little weld here on the end, I can't get much weld on it. There's no point in really worrying about really, really penetrating because it's going to penetrate. And just one little seal pass is about all, it, all it, it'll accept. No matter how much I build it up, there's only so much metal there. So did a little lay wire technique on that too. And here I'm using just a little bit more amperage and I'm pushing a little rod in there to uh, keep that wire from balling up. And uh, see, there didn't quite keep it pushed in and it balls up. As long as that doesn't get too far out of hand, you're okay. All right, that's the slider job. Hey, and if you're on my web page watching this video, make sure to scroll down and watch the second video. It's a shameless plug for a TIG finger. I'm going to try to sell you one today. All right, it's a pretty good video anyway on welding some aluminum beads. Thanks for watching. Visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.